friends, happy new year. How has it been for you? This time of year is confusing for many, <laughs> myself included. I find the mountain of motivation and best life talk at the start of the year to be quite overwhelming. This time of year, we are just bombarded with messaging and comparison and you shoulds and dream bigs and step ups and so on and so forth when actually I think it's perhaps most beneficial to just turn in and rest, to be a bit antisocial, to feel your feelings and allow yourself to simply be without any guilt or anything of the sort. Of course, that's always easier said than done, and this weird, blobby time of year is confusing, especially emotionally. I have been resting, and I have also felt guilt, and a little bit lost, and still a little bit overwhelmed. And it's all okay. <laughs> it's all okay. We are simply doing the best we can, whenever we can. So, with all of that in mind, I hope that you've had a good start to the year. I hope that you're feeling well, and thank you so much for spending this time with me. Cheers, friends. Wait a minute. <laughs> if you have not already, go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea. I'm enjoying some peppermint. Grab your coziest of comfy blankets. We are going to talk books today. Specifically, my five favorite books of 2022. They're really, really good, you guys. But before I dive into it, I just want to talk about reading and goals, you know, the whole new year jarble. Every single year, I set myself the goal to read 50 books a year. And for the very first time in seven years, I failed at that goal last year. Yep, I failed and I feel so immensely relieved to have failed at it. I absolutely love reading. It is my escape. It is my most favorite form of therapy. It gives me perspective in my everyday life. It's one of the most significant ways I've been able to connect with each and every single one of you. It is such a gift and one of my great loves in life. I absolutely love reading. However, I had begun to feel kind of trapped by my 50 books goal and therefore had begun to resent reading, or rather, I had shifted from reading for pleasure and curiosity and knowledge to reading simply to reach a goal, a numerical goal, which isn't how I want my relationship with reading to be. So, like so many of my other routines and structures, my reading goal totally crumbled in 2022. 2022 was just a chaos of a year for me, and now that I have officially broken the trend and fallen short of my goal. I feel genuinely excited to step into reading this year and just see what happens. I'm not setting a numerical goal for myself. And once more, I will read from a genuine curiosity, a genuine desire to learn, to escape, to gain perspective, to spend time with my most loved characters and places. Who's with me? Hmm? <laughs> But of course, I must say that numerical reading goals are really, really great and really any amount of reading you do in a year is wonderful, is exceptional. Time spent reading is never a waste of time. And no matter the amount of pages read or hours listened, you have accomplished something if you've enjoyed at least one book this year or last year, whatever. <laughs> With that in mind and without further ado, here are my five favorite books from the previous year. Ba -ba -da -da. <laughs> so, in no particular order of favoritism, actually this was my favorite book of the year, but after that there's no, no specific order, I'm going to begin with The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Oh my goodness, you guys. This was a joy to read from beginning to end. So very, very comforting, absolutely magical, funny, with a sprinkle of romance, and very human and relatable. If you are in a reading slump, I recommend diving into this. It is just pure enjoyment from beginning to end. So, this is an adult fiction book that follows Mika Moon, a witch living in modern day society who was orphaned 
at a young age and raised to believe that she had to be alone in order to survive and that she could not openly practice her magic. As such, and quite predictably, she feels very alone in the world and searches for a connection through social media, which happens to be the only place she can openly practice magic under the guise of just being a pretend witch on TikTok. That's just a teeny bit of the story. However, the loneliness that she felt from childhood to present day, not having that real connection, or rather not being able to be who she truly is openly, is really, really important when she finds herself in the company of three other witches and a misfit family of sorts, and perhaps finds a home that she's never had. <laughs> it's really heartwarming. It's also very funny. It's, it's not actually so cheesy, but is definitely a comfort read. For those reasons and more, I love this book. But the thing that stands out the most to me is the found family trope, or rather, the healing of loneliness through total acceptance for being who you truly are. The gift of being wholeheartedly yourself and loved for it. I think we all want that. I most certainly do, and I feel like I get quite a bit of it here, so thank you. The next book I'd like to highlight is Before the Coffee Gets Cold, a novel by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I was surprised when this book changed my life. It is short, the writing is wonderfully simple, or rather to the point. I guess one would say poignant, because in very few pages, the author manages to get at the heart of something very human, very relatable, and very profound. I would love to say exactly what that thing is, but I can't summarize it. Um, if I were to try, I would say Kawaguchi really, really does a great job at embodying our human desire to live a good life and kind of puts us face to face with our flaws, whether it be past actions, flawed relationships, bad decisions, regrets, so on and so forth. Things that have happened that make us question whether or not we are living a good life. So he kind of confronts us with these things and then comforts us in showing us that they're shared experiences, it's all part of the human experience, and guides us through four examples of <laughs> this cycle with an ambiguous resolution, but I found comfort in the ambiguity. So <laughs> this is very abstract, but basically, Kawaguchi asks the age-old question, if you could travel through time, would you? And if you could change the past, would you? This book follows four people who are given the opportunity to time travel and take it. And to summarize it would be to give it away. So I want to leave you guys with this quote. It is my favorite quote of the novel, and I think wonderfully summarizes the heart of the story, much better than I can in all my rambling. But Kazu still goes on believing that no matter what difficulties people face, they will always have the strength to overcome them. It just takes heart. And if the chair can change someone's heart, it clearly has its purpose. Hmm, poignant. Next on my list is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. Ooh, okay. I actually listened to the audiobook adaptation of this book and it was incredible. I so highly recommend listening to the audiobook. This is a wild story, a bit of a page turner, and I'd say at the heart of it is personal legacy, loss and forgiveness, privilege, and the passing down of history through culture, specifically baking, specifically black cake. So the narrative weaves between two siblings, their mother, and the riveting tale of a young girl in the Caribbean or Caribbean. It's somehow all connected from the Caribbean to London to present day California. So two estranged siblings are brought together when their mother passes away and leaves behind a tape recording which stated in her will they must listen to 
together while enjoying black cake. In the process of listening to their mother's tape recording, their whole world is kind of turned upside down. Their identity, their childhood, everything that they thought was set and secure in their life experience is thrown into doubt. And so the experience of reading Black Cake makes one question, what makes up our identity? How important is family in your identity? How important is cultural heritage? What about your actions and who you decide to be? It's all a part of it. Again, I feel I've gotten very abstract in the outline of this book. It was just really fun to read and really made me think a lot. And as such, made it one of the most memorable reads of my 2022. Hmm. <laughs> okay. For those of you who know me, who have been here for a while, this book comes as no surprise, but of course, one of my most favorite reads of 2022 was Devotions by Mary Oliver. This book, this collection of poetry is medicine for my soul and has multiple times pulled me out of my winter blues. I would even go so far as to say it has pulled me out of depression. It just feels like every single one of these poems speaks to my heart, or rather when I read it, there are just parts of me that feel seen and feel understood and that sensation is so incredible. To feel seen and understood is such a gift. One that I rely on every winter into spring. Now the title of this book has kind of a religious connotation, but I would not at all describe this book as religious. Rather, it focuses more on devotions to nature, to love and to loss, to the human experience, to our dreams, and to our failures and our shortcomings. Again, we all have them and it feels so comforting to not be alone in that. Mary Oliver has many collections of poems. This is just over 200 of her poems in one book, so it spans from the very beginning of her career, in the 1960s, she published her first collection of poems when she was 28, all the way through 2015, but actually in reverse order. So you get to experience her most recent work and then make your way to her beginnings, which is really wonderful. You get to see the progress that she made across her lifetime through her poetry. I could go on and on. If you are feeling low, if you are feeling sad, I recommend giving this a go. I did not like poetry. I didn't, I never found poetry that I loved. It just wasn't a genre that I was interested in until I read these poems. So I think they are approachable for anyone. Last, but by no means least, I have The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. What a wild ride of a book. I can honestly say I have never read anything like this before in my life. It is entirely unique to what I've read. It has been heavily compared to another author, a very famous book that I think I'm gonna read this year, A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This book falls under my favorite genre, specifically the Latin American magical realism. I think they do it best. Um, every chapter in this book could be its own story. It is so rich with detail. Every character is so human, so believable, even in their magical aspects. So the story spans three generations within one family. It begins with a little girl, Clara, who becomes a mother and follows into her daughter, Blanca, and her life story followed by her daughter, Alba, and is told from the recollective perspective of Esteban Trueba. So he is the male figure in all of these women's lives, or rather, he marries Clara, Blanca is his daughter, and Alba is his granddaughter, and he is the narrator. However, he is pulling from journals written by these women and his own memory 
So he's telling the story as an old man after having experienced all of what's happened. And not only does the story follow this family, but it also tells the history, a very significant portion of Latin American history, specifically, but never actually specified, hinted to Chilean history, post-colonial Chilean history, which I actually didn't know anything about, so it was really, really interesting to learn through this story about that history. That being said, many parts of this book are absolutely brutal, like heartbreakingly, horrifyingly brutal. So if you choose to read it, go into it with an open mind and remember that this although it is fiction, although it is magical realism, puts you at the heart of the experience of someone in Chile during the 1950s into the 60s. Fiction has such a powerful way of connecting us to humanity. Some people think that fiction is a waste of time, that only nonfiction books are worth their time, you know, best life, <laughs> memoirs, biographies, so on and so forth. They have immense value. However, fiction just puts you in the heart of the experience in a way that other works can't. It's why I love it. Reading is never a waste of time. You can always gain perspective on everyday life, on history, even on the future, should you choose, through reading. This book was an experience. Magical, at times funny, at times devastating, at times completely transportive, and at times boring, if I'm honest. It took me a long time to get through this book, but I did overall really, really enjoy it. My camera died right at the end of that, which was perfect timing. I could have kept talking forever, so that's a wrap. My five favorite books of 2022. Please comment down below your favorite book or books of 2022. I love getting book recommendations. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, now that I am free of my 50 book goal, I am feeling genuinely excited to read this year. As such, I wanna share with you guys five books that I'm excited to read this next year. <laughs> and I'll just list them off really quick. So in no particular order, I have Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times by Catherine May. I've already talked about this book. I have been recommended it many times over and I am like 30 pages in and love it. We'll see how the rest of it goes. Tales from the Wild Swans by Jackie Morris. Randy gave me this for Christmas and it is so beautifully illustrated. I have too many books in my hand. Oh, it's just like, I aspire to be able to paint like this. That's kind of scary, actually. Let's find a beautiful one. I mean, they're all beautiful in their own way. Look at this. Incredible. So I think it's going to be a quick, fun read. You guys might also be familiar with this one already, but Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I was recommended this book by a complete and total stranger in a bookstore, so I did not personally seek it out. However, when I mentioned it in a previous video, so many people commented that they absolutely enjoyed it, loved it. I don't know, it got great reviews. The rest of the trilogy, mixed reviews, but this book at least, raving reviews, so I look forward to it. I'm very excited to read Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop by Roselle Lim. I think, I hope, I shouldn't compare. <laughs> it is not good to go into reading a book with expectations of a book that you know and already love. This book, when I read the summary, gives me hints of the feelings that I got when I read the very irregular the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I always mix up that title. Anyways, this looks fun, it looks lighthearted, it looks magical, and has a sprinkle of romance. So probably a delightfully comforting read. 
And lastly, on my next five books, I have my first movie, 20 Celebrated Directors Talk About Their First Film, edited by Stephen Lowenstein. 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 I'm not sure this will interest many people, however, it deeply interests me because it is my dream to make a movie or to make a series, like a TV series or these days a Netflix series, an HBO series, so on and so forth. I love making YouTube videos and I want to grow into the, I don't know, the professional cinematography realm while continuing to make YouTube videos, of course. So this is exactly what it says it is. It is a series of interviews with people who have made movies and I hope to gain some inspiration and knowledge and motivation for my very big dream. That's that. Oh, <laughs> I need a tea. <sighs> That's good. I'm all out. <laughs> I've been talking for like an hour. I don't know about you, but once I've listened to somebody talk about their favorite books and books they hope to read, I get so excited to read. So I am going to make myself a new cup of tea and cozy up with a book. And I know I have talked endlessly, however, there is one more thing that I want to share with you guys, and it is an intention for this next year. It's not a reading goal, but it kind of is. So rather than set myself a numerical reading goal, I have set myself the intention to read books that I already own, <laughs> which is, oh, it makes me nervous to announce that, which seems really, really silly. However, as I'm sure many of you can relate, it is so much fun to go to a bookstore and buy books. It is so much fun to go to a library and check out books. I just want all the books, all the books. You can never have too many books. However, I have begun to feel that I have too many books. And so, Instead of buying new books this year, I really want to dedicate my time to reading the books that I already own. I will no longer have the shadow of the overwhelming TBR behind me. <laughs> and then hopefully I can start next year fresh and excited to indulge in new books. Again, I ask, who's with me? And I happen to already own a great diversity of genres authors, stories, and just wonderful books. So I'm excited to appreciate the treasures I already have. Happy reading, friends. Thank you for being here.